Good morning, classy, classy people. How y'all doing? My name is Wayne Bolden. That's right, I'm your Speed King. Early Saturday morning, as always, horse talk. We try to get here early on Saturday while we're having a nice cup of java. And um, before we get going, though, I would be remiss. Today is 9-11, so once again, you know, our condolences and prayers uh, go out to the uh, families and friends who have lost people that uh, was affected by what happened nine, uh, on 9 11 20 years ago and of course the first responders you know um, man what a tough day and, and we'll, we'll never forget so we just again want to acknowledge them and, and, and our prayers go out to the family and, and friends and of course again like I said the first responders on that terrible terrible day in our country's history you know 9 11 man but just never gets easier every time it comes up so again all right so you know Saturday morning we're here we're actually looking forward uh, to Tuesday up at Fort Erie a couple of our viewers uh, reached out to me about uh, the Prince of Wales stakes and a couple stake races on Tuesday um, that's taking place up in um, uh, Fort Erie uh, in Canada and Tuesday is the uh, the 14th and uh, Trevor Trevor thanks a bunch mr. Kane and I said yeah I'll go ahead and do it and so they have three stake races up there uh, the biggest one for four hundred thousand dollars is the Prince of Wales so it is a field of eight going to ma uh, one mile and 316 for three-year-old Canadian breads right and uh, so let's dive right in you know on this Saturday morning you know taking it easy not fired up just yet a lot of racing coming up from Kentucky Downs Anyway, um, let's let's dive right into this race. It is the tenth race on the card on Tuesday. Uh, it probably goes off about six six fifteen somewhere in there. And uh, the number one Abel Man. Abel Man is a, a three year old uh, by Old Forester. Six starts, two wins, zero seconds, and two thirds. Um, very very nice uh, Abel Man. I think I cashed a ticket on this horse two back actually. Uh, seven to two on the morning line here. Speed figures are absolutely comparable here. Each and every one over the six over the six races that this here uh, colt has um, has improved. Then it should. He's only has six starts, so Able Man is viable in this spot. Uh, is a stakes uh, winning uh, horse. Uh, last race in the stakes race at the Queen Plate, of course. And of course, you know we love safe conduct. That day with uh, Irad Ortiz coming up in the Queen Plate on the 22nd of August. An able man came out of that race, finishing six by two and a half lengths. And a few of them came out of that race, right? That's uh, Canada's biggest race, the Queen Plate. One that I look forward to each and every year. But able man is very viable here. The speed figures are in line. The horse is coming off of a 23-day layoff. So we expect able man to... Uh, be somewhere around the money or around that wire, um, you know, when they when when all is said and done. Now, I don't particularly like him in the win spot here, but I don't think it's viable to leave Able Man off the ticket if you're playing tries or uh, exactors underneath. The number two horse, well, title force, well, four starts and two wins, no other placing for this horse. Gail Cox is your trainer of record. And this horse comes out of the same clean plate race, of course, on the 22nd of August up there at Woodbine. Again, we know Safe Conduct was the winner. And the speed figure just doesn't really match up here. Um, title Force is 15-1 uh, to 1 in this spot. And we're going to kind of look by uh, Title Force in this spot. It is, it is by Mal Malibu Moon, which is very, very nice. I always like Malibu Moon horses. Bet that horse a bunch out in California. But I just don't think title force is um, at this particular time. With only four starts, lightly raised. Speed figures aren't horrible. Just that these horses that came out of that August 22nd race, you know, behind safe conduct, it, it's pretty easy to handicap where they are among each other. So we don't like title force in this particular spot. The number three horse, a very interesting horse here, Curlin's Catch. Mr. Catch uh, 
has eight starts, two wins, one second, and one third for one hundred and forty thousand dollars. And of course, this horse is by Curlin, right? Yes, that's right. Curlin, who I believe should have won the Derby, trained by that's right, Steve Asmussen. The number three horse, Curlin, catches a very, very nice filly. Um, now, what you will notice about uh, Curlin's catch uh, is that she is the only filly in this race. That's right, Curlin catches a filly. And it's a very, very nice filly, you know. She's, again, by Curlin on the back end out of a mare called Catch the Thrill, who was by AP Indy. So this horse is bred top to bottom uh, all over the place. And if that wasn't enough, uh, trained by the classy, classy uh, uh, Mark Cassidy. And so, again, there's a very lot, uh, you know, very, very good upside to uh, Curlin's Catch, the number three horse in this spot. And we look to hear some work from her. Had a Dasher. Had a Dasher, the number four horse, has four starts, one win, and zero seconds and, and two thirds. And uh, Attar is our trainer, K. Attar. I believe it's Kevin, I'm not sure, but I, I, I'm sure my Canadian contingents will correct me on this. Well, Had a Dash is, a, a, again, a very, very nice horse, very speedy horse, the number four horse. Horses by Air Force Blue, very very nice. And out of uh, out of a had a dash and uh, mare who's by why 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 I remember that horse why why why. But again, the number four had a dash is a you know a very viable horse. Speed figures look um, moderate, just like everybody else's in this field. They are all fairly fairly close in this field, uh, twelve to one and. Um, you know, I mean, I'm not crazy. I have nothing against the number four horse at a dasher. I do think that she's going to be very, very viable in this spot. And, you know, I think she's improving each and every start. I don't see nothing negative to say about her. And at 12 to 1, that is a huge, huge overlay for this horse, I believe, in this spot. If for no other reason she's going to be, uh, he's going to be formally placed. Uh, such a young uh, four-year-old uh, with only four starts. This horse has already been gelded and um, you know so I expect some consistency but she does come but he does come out of that safe conduct race which is the Queen's Plate everybody know was 15 to 1 in there. Gary Bollinger, Bollinger is the uh, rider up here and we expect the number four had a dasher to be very I, I wouldn't leave this horse off the win spot off the exact spot or the try and at 12 to 1 that's just ridiculous you know I think this is just a, a serious overlay if you get anywhere near 12 to 1 wow I think the horse should probably be 4 or 5 to 1 in this spot if I was making the morning line I like how to dash her quite a bit in this spot and at 12 to 1 that's not hard to take and the number 5 again here's another horse that's out of that queen plate on August 22nd uh, H.C. Holiday. You'll see this horse in quite a few of these horses running lines. Uh, this horse out of everybody in the field ran the best that day in the Queen's Plate. Um, H.C. Holiday ended up running third in this million dollar race on the 22nd of August. Uh, very, very deep, deep closer. Uh, we'll be making up a bunch of, a bunch of ground. Uh, Kateris is your rider and um, you know, too bad Able Man beat this horse on August 1st in an overnight stake race up there in Canada at Woodbine. And that was the plate trial, so I guess that was a prep for the Queen plate. But on August 1st, Able Man did beat H.C. Um, Holiday. So these, uh, quite a few of these take turns beating up on each other for sure. But H.C. Holiday is, is a fairly decent horse. I hate the odds, morning line odds on her five to one and um, you know I don't particularly like her but the way that this horse runs deep deep you know deep deep closer and does be making up ground down that lane I probably wouldn't leave her out uh, leave him off of the ticket here in terms of uh, tries and exactors but you're not getting any value he's only five to two on the morning line that is HC holiday well, the number six horse, Ready at Dawn. Yeah, we are Ready at Dawn. We got our coffee. Ready at Dawn, the six has six starts, one win. No no other placing, second or third. Very, very speedy horse. This horse is coming off the maiden win, August uh, 9th, uh, right across this track. Um, 
Port Erie. Now you got to realize most of these horses are shipping in from the bigger track, Woodbine and stuff. But Ready at Dawn is a local horse here. Speed figures are serious, seriously light here. Uh, I just, you know, from what I can see here, just one win, which is the last one, the maiden bred really nice. This Canadian bred by more than Ready. But it just looks like the hometown folks just put this horse in because it's at their home track up here at Fort Erie. But this horse is serious, seriously overmatched in this spot, ready at dawn. And I would be shocked uh, if this horse isn't the one that's finishing glass um, uh, of this bunch of eight. Now, you know, to the horse's credit, it is a local horse. It may be a horse for the course. Um, but the speed figures are real, real light. But the only real, real positive thing, and you know it always gets my attention, is that this horse is speedy. And uh, it will go try to get to the front with the number four hat a dasher, who I believe should be forwardly placed. I think the eight should be forwardly placed too. But the six is speedy, but I don't like the six in this spot at all. So I'm going to go ahead and toss that horse ready at dawn right off our ticket. And the number seven horse, Harlan Estate. Well, Mr. Estate had nine starts, two wins, and two seconds. Kevin Attar again is your trainer of record uh, in the running line on August 22nd. Once again, which is the queen plate, all these horses come out of there. This horse finished seventh by two limbs. And of course, you know the horse that finished best of them all in the queen plate uh, that's in this race is the number uh, five horse, H.C. Holiday. And uh, of course, it, beats, it beat the number seven Harlan Estate. So again, Harlan Estates speed figures are just like the rest of them that came out of the Queen Plates. You know, you say potato, I say potato. You can throw a blanket over those horses that came out of them, and it's real, real close, right? So again, uh, quite a few of them are going to have an opportunity to improve here. These are lightly, lightly raced colts. In this case, nine starts with two wins, and... Um, and Harlan Estate, the number seven, is only six to one on the morning line. Of course, one of the leading trainers up in Canada. And Kumara is a, a rider, and I like that kid a bunch up there. He can just flat out ride, and it doesn't matter what the price is. You know, that kid can really, really ride as I was watching Canadian racing. So Kumara, Kumara, I believe that's how you say his name, is a very, very talented, talented rider. And that's on number seven, Harlan Estate. And the bottom horse at 3-1, to one, keep grinding. Well, every time we wake up and we go to work every Monday morning, you know, what we do is we just keep grinding, right? Which is, uh, anyway, you keep grinding. The number eight horse, six starts, one win, one second, and one third. That's not bad. Another Atar horse, T. Atar. Um, again, the horse comes out of uh, the queen plate race, and the speed figures are okay. They're good. I mean... Just as good as anybody else that came out of the queen plate. Now, let's just take a moment of the eight. And let's see how many of these actually came out of the queen plate. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, out of the eight horses in this race, six of them came out of the queen plate. The one that finished the best out of all of them and looked fairly good would be H.C. Holiday and the number eight, Keep Grinding. Both of these horses are, uh, one is uh, Kevin Attor's horse, the five, H.C. Holiday, and the eight is T. Attor's horse. So six of the eight horses in here come out of the queen plate, and that's a handicap and angle right in itself. And the only outside horse here is Ready at Dawn, the number six, who's the local horse here from Fort Erie. Just looks horrible in this spot. So, uh, you know, <laughs> that's what you have here. So, at the bottom line, I do have a really, really strong opinion in this race. I looked at the race top and bottom. Like I said, six of the eight come out of the uh, queen plate. I don't think that's a key race by no means. Uh, of those horses, I believe H.C. Holiday is better than all of them, and as well as the bottom horse, uh, Keep Grinding. But 
I think Mark Cassidy has these folks at a, at a very, very big disadvantage. That's right, he has a Philly. I think the Philly has a huge, huge edge in here. One, the bloodline is by Curlin on the back end, coming out of a horse, Catch the Thrill, who is by AP Indy. And for Canadian bred, this horse is trained, uh, uh, bred up and down and trained by one of the most classiest and handy uh, trainers on, on campus. Uh, Patrick's husband is in the orange and riding. Him and Mark Cassidy is clicking at a 32% win, win percentage together. And the number three horse is 9-2 to two on the morning line. And I just flat out love uh, this filly at this spot, uh, Curlin's catch. I mean, this horse is very, very good. And I tell you right now, the speed figures is good and just as comparable as anybody else's in this spot. And of course, you know that they're spotting her five pounds, okay, she has 121 pounds, and everybody else in the field is carrying, what, 126 pounds, you know, because they're culture geldings, and the field is in, so she's toting one, 124, sorry, and the rest of them are toting 126, so this is a very, very interesting horse making uh, a very nice start here, a 44 day layoff for Mark Cassidy, and we're just heads over heels with Perlman's catch in this spot here. So, once again, folks, as always, uh, down in the description, please uh, read our disclaimer down there. Enjoy your Saturday, enjoy the bunch of racing out there at Kentucky Downs this morning or this afternoon, and as always, stay classy in all that you do. And once again, our condolences and you know, our heart prayer, prayers go out to uh, the families and, and uh, first responders of 9-11 as we uh, remember uh, those folks for their bravery and everything they've done, uh, and it's 20 years later. Um, and of course, I would be remiss if I say it's football weekend. Go Giants! You see the number, number 11? That's right, Phil Sims. Somebody tell me why Phil Sims is not in Canton, Ohio. Please tell me. But there you go, folks. Football weekend. Very big, big weekend. Some happy and some sad. We've got football. we got racing, which are just outlets, right? And that's why we should have fun because there are some more serious things in the world, uh, you know, hope, trust me, than what we're doing here with horses and, and football, right? And again, a happy, sad day uh, today, Saturday, 9-11. So, again, our prayers are out to to the first responders and all those people that it affected, families and friends. As always, folks, keep it classy on a Saturday morning here at Horse Talk. My name is Wayne Bolden. I am your speed king. Remember to have some fun, and most of all, stay classy in everything that you do. Talk with you nice folks.